And so I feel like when you, when you pack next to the high dragon, you're still getting something from having the mouse hold on the field. But we're going to try this again, everybody. We're getting back into team preview, and hopefully we got the technical difficulties sorted out for you. We're still on round three. Yep. Yeah. So we're we still got tons and tons of Pokemon action third headed your way. Third time is but the come charm, on. Rosemary. It, it, third, Everyone. Third time is the charm. Please, Cross please, your fingers. please, everybody. Let's do this. Let's sense of energy <laughs> so that we can get this game started. We're trying it again. I see the leads entering onto the field. Mousehold and Hydreigon, Meowskarada and Sylveon. Okay. And. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, are we here? Are we? Yes! Ah, let's go! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> the battle has finally started here, and I can't wait. I mean, it's actually interesting, right? Because both players have had know exactly what their opponent was going to lead with. So Brendan locking in his moves very, very quickly um, and kind of opting just for a lot of immediate offense here. Um, one thing you actually called out was that the mouse hold on this team is friend guard, which is pretty interesting because it's friend guard with the like wide lens and the population bomb set, which is actually, I wouldn't say like super, super common here. Mm -hmm. And so mouse hold right now definitely threatened. Uh, knockoff, by the way, from Yaskarada is really good into population bomb wide lens mouse hold because if you get rid of that wide lens, it has, it does not have near as much accuracy anymore and here's a Terra to wow. get things started. Yeah, I, I love that you bring that up because Wide Lens really does help you to, to nail those population bombs to get like maybe eight to ten hits, but it does have an accuracy check for every single time you want to hit with population bomb. So we're gonna just see a protect here as that Hydreigon will Terra to steel type and the knockoff they go right into that protect too. Yeah, I think great protect on mouse hold. I think you either often consider a protect or a switch. And the tailwind here is really critical. That's a bold move as well, because Brendan's Meowskarada actually has that trick room. So Hayden kind of saying, I don't think you're actually going to go for the trick room in front of me. And this actually is super, super smart from Hayden's end, because now the mouse hold, it still has that wide lens, has that population bomb, and you have full speed control. The other thing is by getting up Tailwind now, you also have a little bit more pressure against the potential Dondozo Tatsugiri in the back. And so I think that was a really safe play from Hayden, because Brendan actually didn't really have too many options to cover for that Hydreigon, right? Like, your best bet is maybe clicking knockoff onto the Hydreigon, but otherwise, like, yeah, Hydreigon likely will survive the turn. So it's a smart play from Hayden, and I think she gains a really huge advantage from that, because now Mousehold has the ability to population bomb either slot. Yeah, and, and at this point, I do feel like you, you just have to go after that Mousehold, because it's a huge threat on the field right now. And, and Hydreigon, Terra typing to steal, I mean, you still have some really nice moves available, but you're also just kind of looking at some of the other options. Now that Terra has been committed for Hayden, that Terra is now now not available for any of the other Pokemon that she has on the field or in the back. And so right after that Tailwind, we're going to see a pivot as Armourouge now going to be taking its place. Yeah, I like the decision to conserve the Hydreigon, mainly because, yeah, it's really valuable into the potential Dondozo in the back. All right, oh. here's Population Bomb. Three One hits, crit. four, five, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh. I was oh. like, oh, the invisible focus sash might be there, but no, this time that mouse hold will be able to get all 10 hits in. And Meowskarada is now out of here. So a huge offensive threat being taken off the board for Brendan. So let's see what he has in the back here. And we do get the confirmation that it's Dondozo and Tatsugiri. So how is this going to be played out here? Dondozo is coming out on the field first. Yeah, I mean, Dondozo is a Pokemon that can snowball so quickly, right? Now, the key thing is that the Tailwind was set up on the opposing end. I think one of my main questions is still, how does Hayden actually KO Dondozo, especially once it actually gets the boosts up, right? Because right now, I think Brendan is in a slight deficit, um, but Dondozo and Tatsugiri, I think, very likely can actually just clean up and sweep through the entire team, right? And so I think, like, it'll be pretty important, in my opinion, for Hayden to conserve this mouse hold, because I think having redirection and follow me even for a single turn is a really, really big deal. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see Hayden actually, you know, maybe go for a protect with mouse hold, maybe even consider switching it out. The other big question is what is Hayden's final Pokemon? It's going to be either the Sylveon, the Amoongus, or the um, or King Gambit. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start the turn with a protect and population bomb just oh. going into Sylveon here. All right. We got four hits. Five. But you can see, right, like, with this um, friend guard set, you're not actually getting like one hit knockouts, right? And yep. so uh, it's still doing a ton of damage though, right? You That's definitely can't discount hits. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that oh, also, oh, that opens the up the door off. for the armor rouge. 
that's going to be a big knockout onto the Sylveon too. But this is the end game that you were kind of hoping for uh, to see with the Tatsugiri and the Dondozo now getting set up. Just he didn't have the right answers. You still have that Hydreigon in the back that has been preserved for later, but it's time to activate that commander. Oh, that was just a really hard call out by Hayden saying, I don't think you're going to switch out. Because the thing is, if you switch out, Tatsugiri gets eaten up by Dondozo. And given that both of the Pokemon targeted the Sylveon slot, the, you know, the, there'll be nothing the, there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing right now is there's the Encore from the Mousehold as well. So uh, depending on how the Mousehold is actually trained here, if it actually just outspeeds Dondozo and gets the Encore off, that would be a, kind of a nightmare. Yeah, just lock that Dondozo into using Protect. That would not feel very good. But we're at the point now where Commander has oh. given Dondozo those boosts. Mouse hold is faster, <laughs> especially under those Tailwind conditions. So Dondozo has to go for an Encore here. And Psy Shock from the Armor Rouge going to be so uh, smart just to kind of keep going for a bit of that damage. But Dondozo's locked now. Hayden played this game literally perfectly. Like, I, I don't yeah. think I would make a single different move. Like, she was so so methodical in the execution. I don't think it's easy to like have this game plan as well, right? But it's very clear that even though on paper, I think her team doesn't look like that strong to Dondozo, this is one of the answers into it, right? The combination of Tailwind plus this mouse hold, I mean, like making every call correctly. And also I think the, the, the one term Brendan's going to keep thinking about in this game is, oh, should I have just switched out immediately mm -hmm. into the uh, Tatsugiri, right? And I, I think like um, Hayden just having so much conviction going for that double up. I think this game looks very differently if the Tatsugiri just switches in immediately. Um, and, and so I think, you know, even though that loss was, I would say honestly, like super one-sided, right? Like Hayden had full control of the game. I think Brendan probably realizes, okay, I, I cannot lose to Encore like that again, right? Yeah. And I think, Hayden has to make a lot of calls, and she made every single call correctly in this one. Beautiful, beautiful play to go for that Tailwind to start the game. Beautiful play to go for that double up and slot slot. So I'm sure Brendan's reflecting a little bit and be like, okay, well now, yeah, if I go with the same combination, I can pressure Trick Root with Meow Scarada instead of going for that turn one option. I can go for uh, the immediate Dondozo Tatsugiri, um, like that switch in rather than not going for it. Um, and so even if, like for example, but then just clicks uh, Trick Room on turn one, it looks super differently, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I, I think though the Hydreigon Mousehold lead, I felt like it, you know, it, was, it looks pretty scary in terms of how much damage you might take, but because it's actually Friend Guard on Mousehold and Steel Terror on Hydreigon, it's actually kind of difficult to break through. And so, you know, one adjustment you can think about is bringing that Annihilate, which pressures both slots with that final Gambit. If you actually look at Hayden's team, there isn't a single Pokemon that can, you know, be immune to that final Gambit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can immediately put on pressure, especially because I believe Hayden's Hydreigon does not have Protect, meaning that you can always safely go for a uh, final Gambit into that slot. Yeah, it does not. Uh, it's going to be three attacks there with the Tailwind. It's a status move. Um, it's also not the Assault Bus variant, so that's something else to keep in mind. But, uh, you know, the other thing that I was I was kind of thinking is that Dondozo for Brendan, there is a set running around that's Rest and Sleep Talk. I think the game looks a little bit different if you do have the ability to try to heal up some of that HP. Mm. But the fact that you got locked into Encore and that it's not going to expire for a few turns really does make that way riskier of a play to even go for. So it's not even a surefire shot that that Dondozo would have been able to stay alive either, especially when the mouse hold is still up too. Yeah, I think like this is honestly not an easy matchup for Hayden, which is why I'm even all the more impressed given how she played that. That last game yeah. was literally perfection. It was like, it so was Perfect. Like chef's kiss, like, yeah. oh my goodness. But <laughs> What a way to start off the stream. It's a best of three, right? So she's going to have to do it again at least once in the next two games. And I think that now Brendan realizes, okay, Dondozo Tatsugiri is so good here. I just need to not get caught in this Encore trap because I think Dondozo Tatsugiri can very easily one-shot everything once it's activated. But, ooh, ooh a new lead. It's going to be Armor Rouge this time around. Okay. And there's the Annihilate. Yeah. Okay, so Armor Rouge and Mousehold versus the Annihilate and the Sylveon. Now, we're, we're looking at, like, even just in in terms of different speed control options, I just feel like the, the Armor Rouge was able to put on so much pressure, but that now Trick Room is going to be available to really set the stage here if Hayden decides to go for something like that. Yeah, I actually misspoke earlier. I was like, Hayden doesn't have any immunities to this final Gambit. It's actually Ghost Terra Mousehold, though. So what you can do is just Ghost Terra turn one, go for Follow Me, and then Trick Room here. And there's actually very little you can do to deny that. So I wonder if that's something that Hayden considers in this position. Hyper Voice is honestly not that strong. This is a beautiful adjustment with the armor, and it's you know, very clear there's a, there's a definitive game plan here <laughs> against these comps. So let's see, is there going to be a Ghost Terra? Oh, it's just going to be Protect. Okay. So Protect coming out here first for the mouse hold as Armour is mm. also going to go for Protect here. So double Protect from Hayden just to kind of feel out what's happening in this first turn. 
as there's the final gambit from the Annihilate, targeting down that mouse hold. Yeah, I really like the double protect play because it essentially, you know that Brendan's uh, Annihilate has the Choice Scarf item. And so you're saying, okay, if I double protect here and you stay on turn one, I know what you're going to lock yourself into. Annihilate doesn't always have to click Final Gambit. It gets access to close combat. It gets access to U-turn. And so by going for the double protect now, you know, okay, you have to go for that Final Gambit, right? So I, I do think Hayden has the interesting play of uh, Ghost Terra follow me trick room now. So we'll see if she ends up going for that. That would definitely be a way to guarantee that the Armor Rouge is able to get that Trick Room up and running. But I still have some questions about how, you know, that Sylveon is really going to work here in this matchup. You know that it's a Throat Spray item, so you're really hoping that that Hyper Voice is going to be able to hit its target and be able to go for those even more effective Hyper voices, but... Here it is! Oh. You know what's scarier than the four Gauss. mice? Four ghostly mice! No! No, I, I don't want to look at it. It's too <laughs> strong, it's too powerful. As the follow me is going to happen here too, the Annihilate is not going to switch off of the field, so now you know it's going for the final Gambit, which is not going to work into that Ghost Terror type mouse hold. So it's time for the Armorous here to go for the Psy Shock, dealing a significant amount of damage here to that Sylveon. Um, but still, look at look at how little that's really going to do here. Mouse hold's going to be able to hang on. Yeah, it's interesting there. I thought Armouche had the ability to maybe go for the Trick Room, but I can understand the decision not to because now, oh, this next turn is really interesting, right? If you're a Nihilate, do you say, I'm going to expect the Mouse Hold to just click Population Bomb anyway um, or, and not follow me, right? Because Mouse Hold now, you know, the armor is chipped away Sylveon enough where Mouse Hold can finish it off with Population Bomb, right? And so if you're Brendan, you could make a really high risk, high reward play of just clicking the final Gambit into the armor slot, calling out, saying, I don't think the... Um, the, the mouse hold's actually going to go for follow me yeah. here. Looks like Brendan's opting for a little bit more of a, the, the safer option, I think, of uh, switching into Ladondozo. But I think that's one really intriguing play, but it's scary when you're already down a game, right? <laughs> it's like if you get it wrong, it's just a complete disaster. But yeah, I think the, the logic behind not clicking Trick Room there with the Armor Rouge is to get damage into Sylveon so that it's in Population Bomb KO range. Definitely. We are going to see that switch come through as Dondozo enters the field. And nice as well for Brendan to be able to reset that Choice Scarf so you can go for something a little bit later as a Protect comes through from the Armor Rouge. So playing it a little bit safe here has going to be a double Protect on the field here. There's a Sylveon. It's going to do that as well. Population bomb, targeting down that slot. I love that play from both players. I think it's just kind of the safest option you have. Like, the one risk Brendan runs in making that play is if you actually, like, ended up doubling into the Dondozo slot, but that's, I think, relatively unlikely. And the idea of protecting the Armourouge there so you don't get caught off guard by a potential final gambit there. So a great protect from both ends. I think both players are fairly happy about maybe how things played out. Now is the question of, okay, I think it's Tatsugiri time. Brendan opted to switch in Tatsugiri this turn. So the question is for Hayden, what do you do this turn. You could go for the follow me, you can set up that trick room with Armor Rouge, but then how do you actually deal enough damage to the Dondozo afterwards? I think that was the main question I was trying to ask at the start, and Hayden masterfully handled Dondozo in game one, but this time around there's no Tailwind support. You can't potentially really go for that Encore um, nearly as easily, and I you know, really have to ask what's in the back here for Hayden. And here it is. All right. Tatsugiri entering the field now just to be able to help bulk up those Dondozo stats. But are we going to see, like, another switch as well? Oh, it's, it's nice to be able to, to see a Dondozo. I, I, it's gonna you say that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be able to, to see a Dondozo. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm trying to stay positive, OK? Uh, <laughs> Commander Boost coming through as the Mouse Hold is going to go ahead and go for a Protect here as well. So what is Armor Rouge? getting up to here. Order up, targeting down that mouse hold slot, and oh as Armor Rouge is gonna be moving, gosh. one of the slowest on the field. So there's the speed increase. It's okay, actually just, just armor, armor cannon. cannon. Okay, I was nervous there for a hot second that we were gonna see a trick room, especially with that speed boost coming through there. is gonna be pretty fast, so that still might be a viable option for later. Yeah, I was thinking if Trick Room went up there, then you get to just Encore into the uh, Order Up, and then suddenly you're just locked into a Dragon-type attack. And this Order Up, as you can see, is the speed because of Tatsugiri's form, not the attack increase. And so it's not actually able to like snowball and do more damage. At this point, Dundozo's damage up is kind of locked. Uh, and so, yeah, I think Hayden, maybe having the opportunity to set up Trick Room there, wanted to just start getting some chip damage off. As you called out, there's no rest on this set, right? So every a little bit of chip damage really does add up. However, there is still recovery from Leftover. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, you know, Brendan's probably like, okay, well, you know, I didn't get the out there, but it's still fine, right? Like, my Dondozo is still in a relatively fine uh, defensive position. I can continue to heal back from leftovers, and so... 
Yeah, my question is, what does Hayden have in the back that really deals with Dondozo? It feels like Encore has like, kind of been the main solution, and it worked out very cleverly in game one, but Brendan's not caught off guard by it this time around. And um, I'm sure Hayden now was thinking, oh, I could have trick room there. But you know, what's done is done. You got to just keep playing the game from this position. Definitely. OK, it's going to be Sylveon getting revealed as the third Pokemon for Hayden. As the wave crash now comes through, Armor Rouge is definitely not going to be surviving that one. So that's going to be a quick knockout for Brendan to take, too. Yeah, actually, given that the Sylveon was in the back, there was a very clear like angle for this endgame if Trick Room had gone up. It would have been Trick Room, then you encore the Dondozo into order up. It's stuck using that Dragon-type attack. Then Sylveon is completely immune to it, so it can just switch in and mm -hmm. deal a lot of damage. So this is the thing with Dondozo Tatsugiri, right? Like, all about it is positioning. And this time around, it is so much more positioned, better positioned than in the previous game. Because, like, things that Encore and Haze can just immediately beat it. Um, but right now, the Dondozo is just healing back a little bit every turn. It's pressuring with a lot of damage as well. And the Sylveon on Hayden's end, I believe, it's, it has some good damage. I mean, it has Hyper Voice, but I don't see how it's clearing up Dondozo right now. I think Dondozo is just too strong at this moment. And uh, the one solution I could think of is Yawn, but we know that Sylveon on uh, Hayden's end actually does not have that Yawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has Substitute. So maybe you're trying to go for a little bit more of like an outlasting strategy here. But the order up into the Mouse Hold, there was no Protect this time around. So Mouse Hold is going to get knocked out. And that brings Hayden down to her final two Pokemon. You've got Sylveon on the field, and you also have that fourth and final unrevealed Pokemon. But the Terra Blast here you know, coming out, oh. is, that's, that's pretty powerful. Whoa. <laughs> that what do you make of that damage? That shit a lot more than I actually expected. So that is quite interesting. That is a lot more damage than I expected as well. But it's had Dragon in the back. So maybe this is where that Encore strategy would have been a little bit tough. You had used the Terra to Terra Ghost Mouse Hold. Yep. And if you had locked it into Order Up, then High Dragon doesn't have the ability to tear away its weakness there either. So Order Up now going into the High Dragon, Ooh. that's a one hit knockout. But is that going to be like, can. Can Dondozo outlast this? It's going to be very fast here. Yeah, I mean, I, Terra Blast here, it should survive, even though Terra Blast actually did do a considerable amount. I mean, it's an interesting solution, right? That's where I think if the Encore come out at some point from Mouse Hole, uh, this game could look pretty differently. But this is what I was saying, right? This matchup is not easy for Hayden, and so she has to get multiple turns correctly in this time around. Like, Hayden was playing Lights Out in the early game, but it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. if Dondozo just gets set up because this thing will just one-shot everything. That is the power of Dondozo Tatsugiri, and so uh, we're going to have to go down to game three. I think seeing how much that Terra Blast actually does is pretty valuable information because it's like, yeah, you can use it as offense, but the problem is, like, Dondozo is just so bulky still, thanks to the stat boosts, and it's very difficult to clear on Hayden's, uh, Hayden's side. Like, a lot of Pokemon just eat up that one-hit knockout immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be feeling pretty good if you're Brendan in that one. You're like, oh, you know, the Annihilate stuff didn't even work out that well, but it's interesting, right? Because Brendan, like, was able to bait out that Ghost Terra from the Mouse Hold, and as soon as the Ghost Terra came out, like, it's great in the short term for Hayden, but in the long term, it meant that there was no defensive Terra from Hydreigon, and that's one of the key Pokemon I think you actually really need to use in order to beat the Dondozo, and so I think Hayden basically has probably to accept that Dondozo and Tuskier is going to come out in this matchup, it's more of like, how do you maintain speed control so you can look for an Encore? I think that's probably the best approach, and she was able to handle it perfectly in game one. In game two, she had the uh, possibility to Trick Room. Um, I'm sure that's something she's got to be thinking about as well. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll see if it's a Tailwind or Trick Room in game three, but I feel like you got to go for one of the two means of speed control. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely when you looked at that one turn as well, where you're like, Armourouche could have Trick Roomed here, and maybe that changes the game uh, quite a bit, actually. But... That it's was game two. Yeah, it, it's so hard to like be in that position and make that choice because exactly. there's so many different options available. And with the information that you have for your opponent, that's another layer into what do I do with my strategy? You can't just think about your own game plan. You also have to kind of consider what the opponent can do as well. Yeah, I think what's interesting now is like the Annihilate plus Sylveon lead, it felt like even though it didn't work out super well in the early game, part of it is that once again, baiting out a Terra so that you can maximize its value in the late game. And yep. so, you know, I, I am now putting myself in Hayden's shoes. Did you like the lead that you went with in the last game? What would you have kind of as a response to that? I think Hayden could go with her own Sylveon, something like Mousehold plus Sylveon, for example, where you can just go. But the, the 
problem once again is how comfortable is Hayden giving up Ghost Terra on Mousehold to get around the final Gambit, right? Because it's like, yeah, it's once again good in the short term, but maybe not valuable enough for you in the long term. Because uh, the problem is by not having that Steel Terra on Hydreigon in the late game, you are so weak into Dundozo's order up. We, don't, we saw the order up, just get the one hit knockout earlier. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, the speed too, like, it, that's definitely really tough. I mean, I wonder if there's a world where maybe you can bring in <laughs> Moonkiss. Just <laughs> trying to think of some other kind of bulky defensive options that Hayden has available that, mm -hmm. that could be something that she can rely upon in this game. But it is a game number three here, tied up one and one. So this game will be the deciding factor for who is going to stay undefeated in the tournament so far. Both of our trainers are at two and zero. And to be undefeated into round three is going to feel very, very good here. But here are the leads. It's going to be a run back is what we saw from game number two. Yeah, I think it felt like things did not go well for Brendan at all uh, in the early game, and you know he was still able to win that last one. This time it's interesting because you're like, okay, well, Hayden has maybe the conviction to just go for that um, double protect play again. And so it looks like Brendan's considering going for that U-turn instead, you know, just pivot out uh, and maybe bring in Dundozo or Tatsugiri. But I, I do think Hayden should maybe play a little bit more towards Trick Room this time around. Armor Rouge was on the field for quite a long time in that previous match and never set up Trick Room. Uh, and so I don't expect it maybe to come out on turn one immediately, um, but I think it should maybe come out at some point in this battle. Yeah, I mean, uh, just seeing the lock in two, uh, even just remembering Ooh, from game number two. Here's a terror immediately from whoa. Hayden's end. Uh, is it going to be the mouse hold again? It yeah, it looks like it. Okay, <laughs> so maybe just in preparation for that final gambit, trying to target down that slot. But it, the ghost terror type, it's been used now. Hayden does not have access to it for later, but oh. armor is going for the protect. So this is a very safe play for Hayden to make. Going to protect away from the final gambit here coming out from the Annihilate. But then also, Mousehold might have still gotten a chance to go for a move like the Population Bomb. So that will connect with the Sylveon. But we saw from that game number one that it was not enough to knock it out. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, once again, that's kind of the downside of having Friend Guard. But still doing a ton of damage here, enough where I would expect a side Shock from the Armor Rouge to finish things off. So that's a really interesting play where you're kind of just distributing damage onto Sylveon. Now, once again, like Sylveon's not really the main problem in this matchup. It's the Dondozo plus the Tatsugiri in the back. And so this next turn is interesting where Mousehold has the very safe Follow Me. You could just go for Follow Me plus side Shock right into Sylveon. But we could see the same play from the previous game where you protect one Pokemon, switch into the other. It looks like Brendan this time of the round is actually uh, considering switching in the Tatsugiri instead of the Dondozo here. So uh, preventing Dondozo from like eating unnecessary damage potentially. Now it's a little bit scary. Um, I, Tatsugiri does have that Citrus Berry as well. So it might actually even survive something like a side Shock plus Population Bomb. Um, but looks like Brendan kind of Going back and thinking about things a little bit. Oh. Ooh, okay, that's <laughs> a, little, a little spicy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Fire Terra, I, I mean, it doesn't really help you against Population Bomb or Psy Shock. It does help out against the Ar Armor Cannon here. But yeah, I think ultimately you want to conserve your Terra for a Dundozu potentially because yeah. of that Amoongus that you called out earlier might be in the back. Yeah, you definitely want to keep yourself safe from that. But it will be Dondozo entering into the field. Uh, but a switch coming out here as well as Armor Rouge. Okay, there's the Amoongus. There's the Amoongus. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to feel smarter about this meta, that's for sure. But the Population Bomb is going to be the first to move. So Sylveon will not get a chance to go for that Hyper Voice despite having had that Throat Spray activated. But this is a free switch in. Brendan played this really well where that Tatsugiri can now come in for free. Yeah, what's so interesting is like by bringing this Mousehold and Amoongus, like you don't really do that much damage. Although I, I say that a Mousehold actually did just kind of KO Sylveon after two hits. And so this is interesting now. Like Brendan realizes, oh shoot, like you did bring Amoongus and you know this time around. And so like you do have the ability to yeah, just go for that Flying Terra. Now Hayden knows it's Flying Terra Dundozo, right? So you, you probably aren't going to just get caught off guard by it immediately. This turn feels really critical to me. Um, it's a question of whether or not Amoongus survives. You know, you could just protect it. You could switch it out as well. Because I think the thing with Amoongus, is if it faints, Dondozo just sweeps very cleanly like it did in yep. the previous game, especially because the Terra was already committed to the mouse hold, so Amoongus can't go for like a defensive Terra here either, so it's really got to worry about that potential uh, Terra Blast. I, I still think, though, if you're Brendan, you target down that slot, because, because at least like you either knock out the mouse hold or, or something else happens, and you know that Hayden does not have Protect available. So you're going to have to be able to do something here. So let's see that Terra come through for the Dondozo will be that flying type. And where does this damage end up going to? Does yeah. Mousehold follow me? Critically, like, also <laughs> no switch, right? Yeah. Oh. 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 Rage Powder. Okay. 
Oh. Let's, how is this going to play out then? So the U-turn is going to come through first. So uh, Nihilate is going to go ahead and get the heck out of here. So that means that the Tatsugiri can now come switch in, provide that commander boost. And I, I wonder if Hades is just kind of expecting, like, I, I could, could just let my... I think it has to be Encore here. Basically, you're saying, okay, I'm going to lock yourself into Terra Blast, and then, like... Yeah. I'm wondering if King Gambit's the final Pokemon this time around, oh, because once you're locked into Terra true. Blast, King Gambit resists that and can just at least go for Cleave a couple of times. And so, yeah, let's see. Oh, it's just Population Bomb, though. Okay, I think that's going to put Hayden into a really tricky spot. Um, mm -hmm. The bombs... You just don't really do that much damage here, right? And he's gonna crit this time around, um, and it adds up decently, but Dondozo has that leftover, so he'll be able to heal back a little bit after each turn. Uh, the Terra Blast here will, of course, just go into the Amoongus slot as well. But I'm actually wondering, you know, with Friend Guard, is there any chance this survives? No. <laughs> no. No, maybe, maybe if he had a Koba Berry, but that, that's definitely not something that is available right now. This does leave us in a very interesting situation where that, so you still have the Armor Rouge. You have that fourth Pokemon from Hayden as well. Yeah. And that hasn't been revealed just yet, but, but Brendan's locked in. Yes. He's got the Terra Flying Don Dozo. You can't switch anything out right now, so that has to stay on the field. Yeah, if I'm thinking maybe Hayden brings out Armor Rouge, goes for Follow Me Trick Room, and you have a Trick Room set up where then you can just go for like Draco Meteor plus Psy Shock Onslaught Don Dozo. Slot. So I'm kind of curious what Hayden's last Pokemon was. I mentioned the Encore option uh, into King Gambit earlier, but that's kind of like high risk, high reward. I wouldn't be surprised to just see Hydreigon waiting in the back. So, but, but I think if Hydreigon's in the back, I mean, one other approach you could go for is actually bring out Hydreigon and then go for Follow Me Tailwind. You can go with the Tailwind mm -hmm. or the Trick Room out mm -hmm. here. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, yeah, there's the Hydreigon. Okay, so the other thing is, I mean, Draco Meteor actually does very meaningful damage as well, right? And so with that population uh, bomb damage from earlier, like, this turn is actually a little bit tricky. Like, I think, yeah, you can always safely order up into Hydreigon because it doesn't have Protect, and so Brendan knows that. So it's saying, okay, well, I'm kind of forcing you to go for Follow Me with Mouse Hold here, essentially. Um, but, you know, I would expect maybe Follow Me, and then Hydreigon just goes for a Tailwind immediately. You could just launch a Draco Meteor as well, but I wouldn't really expect it to KO the Dondozo. Um, but what is scary is this is why some players like to use the order up with the speed increase because then the Dondozo can actually increase its speed from each order up. Uh, and yeah. that's a really big deal in an end game where Hydreigon might be angling to set up Tailwind right now. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, it's the Encore. Okay, so it was able to move first. So now Dondozo has to go for the Terra Blast here. Flying Terra Blast into the Hydreigon. It does survive. And so now it's going to be able to go for just a Dark Pulse here. Interesting choice. That's such a big interaction, though. Actually, like, that's one thing I was thinking about because I feel like I've been conditioned to think that the Mouse Hold was really slow because it's this yeah. bulky set. But it's max speed Mouse Hold, likely, right? Like, it's outspeeding Dondozo here. Wow. And so, wow, I didn't even think about that as an option, but that's so, so amazing. Like, this Mouse Hold is, like, teched out really to the maximum. That's and so cool. So now you're locked into this Terra Blast. You can't increase your speed from order up. And the Mouse Hold is just faster here. Population Bomb did like meaningful damage earlier. I'm not sure it's enough to actually knock out the Dondozo though. Well, uh, but now Hydreigon is still alive. You could go for Follow Me here. Uh -huh. and now Hydreigon can just go for a Draco Meteor. Yeah, that Draco, should be able to do the job. I think you might want to actually consider Tailwinding this turn. True. And, and so like you get the speed boost and then you can just go for knockouts after. That was so cool. Like I was like, Mouse Hold's moving <laughs> first. Like, I was like, what is, what is happening right now? But what a, what, like this Mouse Hold said, I've never seen anyone use Mouse Hold this way to beat Dondozo. It, it's brilliant. That it's is just so absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so you do get the Tailwind wow. up, and now you guarantee to be faster than the Dondozo. A little bit of leftover healing coming through here, but that Mouse Hold provides this free switch back in for him to bring in that Armor Rouge. Yep, and now you know you're locked into Terra Blast, and so you can just go for something relatively safe, like that Dark Pulse plus the wow. Psy Shock. The game's not over yet, right? I, I think um, Hayden made a really brilliant play to, I would say, yeah, keep yourself in this one because it's not easy, but you can see so many clever solutions to Dondozo Tatsukiri. I'm still just getting over the fact, yeah. Like well, because you don't know that. Yeah. When you're looking at the team sheet, yes, exactly, you don't know how exactly. they're trained. Exactly, and that's, that's like, think, you know, people look at open team sheets and you're like, oh, you know, most of the information, but not knowing the speed interaction is such a big deal. And I feel like you I wouldn't have known that. Exactly. I was conditioned to think, hey, maybe this mouse hold isn't actually that fast because it's got the, the friend guard. But it's it's this interesting set where, like, Wildlands and Population Bump still does a lot of damage, even, you know, uh, 
just with the friend guard. Uh, friend guard gives you more defense as well. I and mean, yeah, this encore is so nice in beating the, the speedy Dondozos. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it's still going to be um, a close finish here, but you at least have Tailwind up. You know that the Choice Scarf uh, Annihilate in the back obviously can't have Protect as well, so you can very safely target into that slot. So I think Dark Pulse plus Psy Shock here makes a lot of sense. Just double up into the Dondozo slot. There it is. Yeah, the Psy Shock as well, now going to be coming through. And so that is actually oh, going to allow survival. Oh. So Dondozo gets to use this Terror Blast here. And that should be a knockout confirmed there onto the High Dragon. Doesn't get a chance to get off any more damage. But that's the play that Hayden had to go for. Yeah, I honestly thought Psyshock would do a little bit more there. Had the potential to go for Armor Cannon instead for more damage as well, but not wanting to maybe eat the drops there. And now Encore ends, and that should just be game over. And so, yeah, Brendan, you know, keeping himself in this one, I, I do wonder if uh, Armor Cannon could have got the knockout there. You know, of course, it was Flying Terra Dondozo. It wasn't Water-type anymore. And so I think it might have had the extra little bit of damage. But Psyshock is just considerably weaker than uh, Armor Cannon in that position. So, yeah, I, I think maybe... If the Armor Cannon had gone off there, Hayden could have potentially won this one, but now you're just not going to be able to beat the Dondozo. And yeah. uh, at this point, there's still the uh, you know Annihilate waiting in the back as well. So, whoa, what a crazy set. Wow. <laughs> That's absolutely wild. I, I mean, Dondozo tier can definitely go for that Wave Crash, but Armor Cannon still maybe gives a chance. Yeah, and it would have done enough, as you saw. After, yeah. You know, the two turns of Leftovers recovery was around that HP, and so, yeah. That's that's the one thing that's I think really hard about Terra, like remembering all the interactions and I, I wonder there if Hayden was thinking, ah, oh, Psyshock will just do enough and it's just my strongest or or thinking like I'd you know, Psyshock is safer. I don't want to eat up the defense drops, um, but Armor Cannon, or, or just maybe forgetting about the Water Terra or the Flying Terra in that position. But Annihilate comes out now. We'll be able to just close things out with, uh, yeah, any move here, like a final Gambit. And uh, Tatsugiri in this endgame, also very valuable. So yeah. what a crazy, crazy best of three here. <laughs> Absolutely wild to see the final Gambit as well be able to pay off. And that's going to be Brendan taking our first match on stream staying undefeated now, but what an impressive showing from Hayden too. We saw so many incredible tech choices coming out there from the mouse hold, but also just that game one was perfection. Yeah, one of the other things I was curious about is how fast Hayden's Armor Rouge was in this end game. Like, was it uh, speedy enough to essentially to outspeed the opposing um, Annihilate, because if it were, then you can, you know, very safely, like, side shock that slot, for example. I was thinking, like, even if um, the Armor Cannon comes out that turn, is it a guaranteed win quite yet for uh, Hayden? Like, I'm not sure, because, like, Annihilate, especially on these teams, normally have, like, max HP investment, or they, we do know, you know, given the final yeah. gamut and the HP stat, and so you're able to actually often take, like, a super effective Draco Meteor, for example, maybe a Psy Shock as well, um, so not sure, you know, depends on how Hayden's team is trained, but then you might feel compelled to double up onto the uh, Annihilate slot. Tatsugiri in that end game. Um, just double checking the moves that it had. It did have the Draco Meter and the Icy Wind, but it did mm -hmm. not have a water type attack. And so, like against Armor Rouge, like Armor Rouge can just consider uh, consistently like click Psy Shock into you, um, which is pretty interesting as well. And so, yeah, it would have been fascinating to see how that end game would have played out had the Armor Cannon came out instead of Psy Shock. But I mean, it was a really long set, and I, I think yeah, it's very easy to just like forget about things like critically there or just think you'll do enough damage with Psy Shock. Yeah, but Dondozo is quite sure. tanky there and uh, yeah, just ignores the Psy Shock. He's like, ah, it's fine. I'll shrug it off. <laughs> uh, and yeah, in the end, Brendan ends up winning in a very thrilling set. Yeah, what an exciting set. I, I mean, just even the, the comeback from that game too as well. I just really put Brendan off on the right foot. We got a chance to see some really cool interactions as well. But maybe we weren't expecting to see. I mean, even in the lead up to the tournament, you were thinking, OK, Mousehold's really there. Maybe it plays next to Annihilate. Maybe it's able to play uh, on its own.